I hated everyone. <laughs> I actively avoided people and meeting new people at all costs. That is until I met Jay. And he showed me how friends can enhance my mental health and my business. I reached out to over 100,000 people, which is a teeny tiny little drop in the bucket. It sounds impressive, but it's really not. So stay till the end to find out how making friends beats making sales. So Jay, in the past, some of my friends have been kind of poor. So I just don't see how friends can equal money. Can you please explain this? All right. Well, first answer this simple question. If you want money, if you want to get money, if you want to receive money, where is that money going to come from? An enemy? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. My enemies aren't giving me money, no. So then if it's not coming from an enemy, it's coming from a? A friend? A friend. Yeah. But, 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 <laughs> okay, yeah. All right. Fair enough. Unless you think that the people you meet are exactly 50% neutral on you. No. Right. Because as soon as they see your boobs, they already have an opinion. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Or as soon as they see your product, they already have an opinion. <laughs> yeah. As soon as they read your first headline, they already have an opinion. True. You're going to yes. find me someone who is scientifically, perfectly 50% neutral on you? No. So then everyone's either a... Friend. Or an enemy. And then, yeah. Okay. All right. Fair play. So if everyone's either a friend or an enemy, where's your money coming from? From my friends. Bingo. And if you look at any struggling businesses... What are they probably short on? Friends. Yeah. Ain't no one buying from them. No one's friendly enough to buy. No one knows, likes, and trusts them enough to buy. Fair play. I guess, to me, the, the idea of friend, in my mind, is deeper than, like, someone who's going to buy from me. Like, someone I would confide in. But, but before you say anything... I have laid myself bare in all of our content and our books and our resources and things. So I guess I already am sharing like personal things with them. So. Well, either way, <laughs> when they read your first headline or first comment or first outreach or first pitch or mm -hmm. first caption. Right. They automatically go on the side of friend or enemy. True. They're not neutral now. Mm -hmm. They have an opinion. Did you use a cuss word in your headline? Maybe they hate you. Did you use a cuss word in your headline? Maybe they love you. Like, yeah, okay. You can't find anyone neutral. Fair. If I challenged anyone to go find someone who feels absolutely neutral about them, as soon as they take a look at them or see their glasses or, or shake their hand or whatever, the neutrality is gone. Yeah. So what are you talking about? No one's neutral. Fair enough. Everyone's either a friend or an enemy. Yeah. And if they're very close, they could be barely a friend or barely an enemy. But there's still that. True. There's not much else you could call them. All right. Yeah. Fair play. Okay. That makes sense. I guess. Mm. So in my mind, like a friend is somebody that I've known a long time and I trust and I, we know a lot of stuff about each other. But like I just said a few minutes ago, we, we put that out there for everybody, like the podcast, our book. The newsletter and all that stuff. It doesn't even matter. If you're a business that sells a product, yeah. you're either making friends of the brand or enemies of the brand. Like it's does it, it's done. Yeah, okay. You could be an AI VTuber and people are either still friendly or an enemy to that AI VTuber. Yeah, fair enough. Well, like I wasn't expecting that answer at all. See, every time I think you're gonna zig, you zag. So this is good. Yeah. You and the audience can take a moment right now. That person who commented on your Instagram yesterday, were they a friend or an enemy? You can tell. They're not neutral. No. If they not. if they bothered to engage with your stuff, they're either a friend or an enemy. They're either there to say, I disagree with this post you made, or they're there to say, like, yeah, same. Or to ask a question. If they ask a question, it could be a friendly question or it could be an, an enmity filled question. Okay. Yeah. That's true. That's you have a fair point there. And I guess, in like I was saying, in my mind, the idea of a friend is different. But really, either so you're right. So I had a conversation with a, a young lady this morning. And like, 
I didn't barely say anything. I just left a comment. And then she started DMing me. And it was clear that she liked my stuff and she liked what I was saying. And she liked my comment and she went and looked at all of our stuff. So even though I don't know anything about her, she was being friendly. So she's on the friend side. The other day, I had somebody tell me that I was dumb. I don't even remember what it was. And clearly, they were on the enemy side because they were not very happy with my stuff. Sure. And it can flip. Someone finds out something new about you. They find out you like this politician or that politician. And all of a sudden, they're your friend again. Or they're your, now they're an enemy. Like, it can change in an instant. But at all points in time, people are either one or the other. Okay. But it still doesn't answer my question. I mean, it kind of does. If you can't get money from enemies. Right. That then your only option is to get money from... Oh, your friends. And so friends okay, are... Fair enough. Friend, friends are money. Yeah, uh, Okay, basically. so you answered my question. And even the mega brands that can get enemies to buy their stuff, like maybe someone hates Netflix or hates their business practices or maybe someone hates Apple's treatment of their labor or something or where they outsource their labor, but they still buy their products. They buy Netflix, they buy Apple. Even if you can get money from enemies... What did you have to do first? It wasn't like Steve Jobs was in his garage and just made something awesome and bam, enemies flooded in from everywhere to buy it. I still had to make. He had to make friends. Right. So and he had to make, make a, yeah. And he had to make a lot of friends for a long period of time yes. before he even got to the level where enemies will buy from him. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So come on. How do you avoid it? Yeah. Friends are money. Yeah. And I've seen people online buying things they don't want to for the, because they do review channels and stuff. And something like blew up so much. You're like, okay, fine. I'm going to buy it. Yeah. Sometimes you get that. Yeah. And so that, that makes sense. But it's super rare. And those review channels had to still make friends first. No, I mean, the product had to make tons of friends to get the, the product had to make yeah, friends. first. Yeah, that's Either way, I mean. friends are involved somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And someone like some solopreneur who sits in their basement and refuses to connect to anyone and tries to avoid all friends and thinks they can stay neutral and private and whatever and they can't engage with the world isn't magically going to get rich it's not happening man no you you got to like yeah i don't know squirrels aren't going to pay you right no. you can't just no and they're not even friendly either well you can't even just but you can make friends with squirrels or animals i'll, I'll get to that later but if you want positive value flowing into your life if you want wealth flowing into your life it's going to come through people who are friendly towards you at the very least they will know like and trust you and your brand and your company and buy from you yeah, because you have to have the know, like, and trust right. them to buy. And someone who doesn't know, like, and trust you is an enemy. Yeah. Like, they are distrustful of you, and they are disliking you, and they don't even know about you or don't want to know about you. It's like, well, I ain't selling to them. Yeah. You've got to get them onto the front side first before you can even try. Right. Fair play. All right. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. That was good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so... I'm a natural friend maker, but I didn't do it for years because of mental blocks that I had. So if someone like me is who's good at making friends has issues with this, how does somebody who is introverted and has a lot of mental blocks about being introverted and making friends, how can they do this? Okay, well, let's tackle a few ground setting questions. For example, have humans been making friends since caveman time? Well, yeah. Would you say this is in our DNA at its core? Yes. Humans are tribal creatures who are yes. generally just able to do this. Yeah, most of us function better when we're around other people and have friends. Yes. Would you say that pretty much every toddler had at least one friend and made that friend without actual help? Yes. So anyone who's watching this and is like, oh, I can't make friends, actually has made friends early on in their life. Yeah. Okay. So even if we have mental blocks, isn't making friends pretty much like breathing or eating or sleeping? It's just something all humans have done forever. I mean, yeah. So you might end up with no friends for a while or you might be alone for a while. Mm -hmm. But in your lifetime, you made friends and you're going to make more friends. Yeah, it's easy. Could we even find a human who just didn't make friends for an entire lifetime? Like, would that even be possible? And if we did find one, would they be some super rare exception that no one needs to really worry about? Like, we're not going to follow in their footsteps? Or would they be everywhere? No, most people have no trouble 
making friends at some point in their life online, real life, as a child. Yeah. It's- right. So a good foundation for this is making friends is fairly simple, fairly natural, yeah. accessible to all. And even if we have some blocks about it, it shouldn't be too difficult to get back to. Yeah. Okay. So making friends is a series of steps. People make it sound like one thing, right? Just make friends. It's a thing you do. Right. But that's like saying just swim. Just swim. It's a thing you do. You just swim. But it's really not, right? Swimming is a series of steps. Yeah. And you better know those steps or you're going to drown. Right. Generally, you know, put on some swim trunks first. And, yeah. and if you're going to skip that step, you better be prepared because it's, <laughs> it's going to be a lot trickier to swim Yeah, well, in jeans or whatever. Yeah, or Nike or whatever. Yeah. Or whatever. So then you either dive in or you wade into the shallow end. These are the steps. If someone doesn't know how to swim, they're going to need these yes. steps. Yeah. And then, you know, you put one arm forward and scoop some water behind you and then alternate with the other arm and yada, 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 right? Yeah. You can break swimming down into a series of small steps. Yes. We don't usually do that. We don't think about it. But for someone who's learning, it's it's kind of important. They they need to break it down into small steps and figure out which step is tricky for them or needs practice or whatever. Right. And they may even need to break it down smaller, like stepping just their feet in the water and then you know, up to your floating and, and, you know, holding your breath and going under once and coming right back up. Like there, yeah, there's levels of steps and levels of the swimming. Yeah. yeah. So my point is something that's easy and natural to most humans. If someone's having a problem with that, what's the first thing they need to do? Step. Yeah. And, yeah. and break it down into steps and stop right. seeing it as one thing. Yes. So a lot of people struggle to make friends. But they never see it as more than one thing. They just say, oh, making friends. Well, I can't. It's hard. Yeah. They, it's like, but that's one thing. What do you mean I can't make friends? Do you mean you can't make small talk? You can't introduce yourself to strangers? You can't take the conversation deeper or forward? You can't uh, discover vulnerabilities or reveal your true self? What what, what, like, what step of friendship are you? That's a really good point. That's a really good point. I don't, I don't think so. For somebody who, in the past, I, I, even though I'm really good at making friends, like you said, it's my superpower, but in the past, because of the mental stuff, I told myself that... I can't make friends. Yeah, like that it was hard to make friends, right? But the truth is, if I, if, if you had asked me back then, like, what's the step? It, it wasn't talking to them. It was always being vulnerable to even start a conversation with someone right after like i talked to them then it felt smooth and flowy and i didn't have problems but for me that first step of just like hi and and introducing myself was so intensely like i was so afraid of it that to me that would all encompass i can't make friends yeah that's what most people do yeah and they'll say the same thing oh i can't drive driving is impossible it's like really but what part like can you get into a car can you turn the ignition? Like, mm-hmm. can you move the car for with the gas? Oh, yeah, I can do that, but I have terrible time parking and turning. It's like, well, so you can drive. It's just parking and turning <laughs> part of it is tricky. Yeah. Like, I can't make friends. Well, you know, so once you break it into steps, then you can pinpoint which step is causing you anxiety or hesitation or resistance or a problem. And this helps you get at the root of your mental blocks. And maybe you you have a block at each step and you have to deal with some mental health issue at each step. I don't know. Right. Some people who have it really bad might have to do that. Yeah. Some people who are only only have a problem introducing themselves or initiating the conversation, maybe they only have one mental health block to overcome. Once they get that, yeah. they're off to the races. It's different for everyone. But right. the process isn't. The process is the same for everyone. You break the thing down into steps, figure out which step is causing you the issues Mm -hmm. and then get to the root of it and then repeat for the rest of the steps yeah and practice and for me once i got past the handshake part because that was something that also freaked me out uh and then the funniest thing is i met a stranger like a really long time ago in high school and i would shake hands like dead fish hand because i didn't want people to touch me and i felt uncomfortable and this girl 
just I was just meeting her. She grabbed my hand and she was like, don't ever give anybody that fish hand ever again because they're going to think you're weak and you're a strong person. Like I didn't even know this girl, right? And it was a lesson that stayed with me for a really long time. And after just that conversation, I realized that like, that's that's part of making friends. I was trying to pull away as fast as possible. But this person was genu genuinely wanted to know me and was interested in me, uh, not in a romantic way, but just like as a person. And my first, her first reaction to me was, I am a weak person and maybe not someone that she wants to know right and so then I didn't even know that was a step that I had to go through or or, or heal or whatever and then after that it was like um what to say like what do I say past hi how are you and so my point is is once I thought I got through a step then something else came up and and I continued to say I can't make friends because then I would do a little bit of work on it and then then something else was hard. Yeah. So this is so good. It makes sense. And then another bonus of breaking it down into steps is that you can pinpoint things and get more specific, more clear answers. If you say, oh, I can't make friends. How do I do it? It's a very general question. Yeah. And you know what general questions get? General answers. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. like, are you happy with the general answer? Is that what you really want? No. Then what should you ask? The actual question. A specific question. A specific question. If you go Google, why am I afraid to, to handshake others? You'll get some very specific answers. Yes. If you Google, do people want weak friends or strong friends? You will get some very specific answers. Right. Like if you want specific answers, ask specific questions. And if you don't know how to be specific, it's probably because you haven't broken down the steps of friendship, yeah. of friend making, and really found out your main sticking point. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. Uh, and I also want to point out if like I was full of massive anxieties, self-esteem issues, self-confidence issues. I was afraid of my own shadow. Like I thought everyone hated me and the things that I was gonna say were stupid, right? Even paranoid. I was super paranoid. Thank you for, for that, because I was a very paranoid person. And if someone with all the anxieties, the social anxieties and the the self-esteem issues and thinking I'm such a crappy person that there's nothing good about me. If, if I can heal all that stuff to become a super sharer, because that's what I am now. That's one of the reasons we're doing this episode is because uh, it's come up a lot recently and I've been working on it being even better at this. And it's so easy for me now, but it wasn't then. But it is easy to change this. So I just want people who are listening or watching that may struggle with some of the steps of friendship uh, in, in marketing, because marketing is friendship, to understand that it's just it's just a skill. And I, I had to learn it. And this is not, I have was not naturally in the past outgoing like this to be able to look at the camera and say your stuff and be friendly and bubbly and happy and like helpful. So if I can do it, anyone can. Yay. Thank you so much. And also thank you for uh, talking about the steps. Like I think uh, a lot of people far too many times, not just with this topic, with every topic, just put it into one thing and it feels so overwhelming. But you've helped me with this and we do it on the podcast too. I do it for everything. For everything. And and it's it's okay that some that what seems like one step turns out to be 10,000. It's cool. And we just, you've helped me work on each of the little 10,000 steps. No, I never cared if it was an extra step. No, you never do. And it's so helpful. It's really helpful. So I'm glad that you brought it up. So thank you. All right. So then to make sales and to do well in business, we have to make friends. But what about like Kim Kardashian and Starbucks and Nike? These are huge companies. Surely they don't give a crap about making friends. <laughs> or maybe they do. <laughs> well, how do you think those guys got started? You think <clears throat> Nike invented their special new shoe and just stood like statues pointing to the new shoe while enemies walked by and purchased them? <laughs> no. No. Oh, look, there's Phil Knight. I hate that dude. Let's buy his shoe. 
It's like so funny. I can't help myself. <laughs> you know, like, well, and even neutral people, they're not going to walk by and think, oh, crazy, brand new, ridiculous, never heard of before shoe. Psych to try that. They're like, yo, I don't know. I'll stick with my normal sandals or whatever, man. Sure. Okay. Fair enough. I'll stick with my loafers or whatever I'm used to running in, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. You've got to make friends with them. You need like a, a nice hostess waving them over. Right. Or, hey, come one, come all. Try this. And you'll love it. It's a great thing. We're all friends here. I know what it's like to be a runner. Let me tell you about my running struggles. Like like Phil Knight and Bill Bowerman would go to track meets and schools and they would introduce themselves to all of the athletes by hand, manually, in person, and, and gently walk them through like what the shoe does. They would make friends first and see if they were open to it. And then if they were, then they would explain further about the shoe. Hey, we could help you shave 30 seconds off your time or something. It's like, okay, okay, I'm listening. Yeah. Nike literally started by making friends every day of the week at track meets. True. True. Their whole strategy was let's make friends with athletes. Yes. Kim K, she got her start before the sex date mm -hmm. by making friends with all the DJs at the clubs, all the bouncers, yeah. all the club owners. Yes. Literally schmoozing all night, every night, like insane work ethic. Yeah, she went to as many... Uh, clubs as she put in a night. Oh, so you do know? I do know. Ah, uh, okay. So, <laughs> so why you've been asking me? You know she made friends. <laughs> yeah, and but so that was then, the beginning. And so then, when she finally has established a good network, then when she puts out her sex tape, what happens? She has fans. Yeah, you know how many like random girls have put out sex tapes? Yeah, yeah, I know. Ah, but what didn't they have? They didn't a have giant a network of friends. Yeah. Especially if they're higher up friends, club owners, that's all right, man. Yeah. They'll put you all over their social media. Okay. But that, that was all the beginning. Yes. So my point is all the brilliant founders you look up to, what secret did they know from the beginning? To make friends. And so do you think they would abandon this piece of wisdom that got them to where they are and they know works later on? I mean... Is it reasonable if you know that being nice to others brings you good karma? Are you just going to randomly stop that and become Hitler tomorrow? <laughs> no. I'm saying. Okay. Right. And so, so even now, do you think the higher ups at Nike would rather sell a hundred or a thousand or 10,000 more shoes today? Or would they rather make friends with a politician or a lobbyist or the founder of BlackRock or something like this? To them, 10,000 shoes is a joke. Like, whatever, man. You know what's valuable? The po politician friend. It's true. You know what's yeah. valuable? The Black Rock friend. Okay. They you... still live and die by friends, and they know it. You have a point. You have a point. Just facts. When they were signing Michael Jordan, they went to his mother and friended her. Yeah. To get Michael to yeah. sign. Yeah. Friend the gatekeepers. Yeah. Friend the friends of friends. Mm -hmm. Friend the friend's family. Okay, but... but they're a huge company. They're, they're huge companies, all three of the ones I mentioned. Yeah, right? and they've understood friendship from the beginning, and they haven't let it go. They're still making friends. Though. I'm saying. All right, fair enough. If if Kim K wants to get her kids into some super prestigious school, you think she just like throws money at the pre prestigious school? It won't work. No, because everyone's throwing money. Yeah, they're all know, getting. They're all. They're all throwing money. Yeah. So what? You, what do you have to do? No one talks about this, but you have to actually schmooze and and. Have something else to offer and put something else on the table and be friends with the director of the school board or something. Like, <laughs> right. There's oh. only limited slots for that stuff. Right. Even today, they're probably facing a friend challenge today. They're probably not facing a money challenge today. Yeah, fair enough. So it's there from the beginning and it's still there at the end. Okay, but then you mentioned gatekeepers, right? Yeah, sure. So I have another question there. What? So then how do people uh, befriend the gatekeeper to get to the f the real friend they want to make? Well, it gets back to the same process of making friends, the one you did as a toddler. So I don't think I can get into the whole process in this episode. That's sure. why I'm like, go Google it or go break down the steps for yourself. Sure, sure. But but generally, it's it's 
get into their circles or their radar first. Whoever you want to make friends with, you've got to be on their radar first. Right. How do you get on someone's radar? Well, not from your basement doing nothing. At least hop online and, and visit their socials. And will you get on their radar from one visit to their socials? Or will they be like, eh, another random like? Maybe you have to comment and then comment next week and then comment next week and then comment five times in a day. And then now you're on their radar. Like, I don't care who you're trying to reach, a gatekeeper, a celebrity, just some rando. You need to be on their radar. If you see someone walking by on the sidewalk and you want to make friends with them, if they're blind or not paying attention to you, you're going to have a real struggle. You've got to get on their radar. All right. Toss a rock at their feet or something. I don't know. <laughs> Wave at them. Yell with a megaphone. Getting attention is a huge part of the game. Yeah. And then once you have attention, is that magical friendship automatically? No, yeah. you just got on their radar. Okay, they stopped their day and they're paying a little attention to you. Yeah. But they're going to dismiss you as like another interruption if, unless you can demonstrate value, uh, make, make some connections, some small talk. You need points in common with people. People bond over commonalities. Yes. They don't bond over ran like super uh, awkward differences and contrasts. Right. You don't usually get a super tiny dude and a super giant dude just running straight towards each other like, yo, let's make friends. <laughs> Did we just become best friends? No, but if you go to the big and tall store and you're a big and tall fellow, you can probably make friends with the owner and, right. the, and the, the other person there and the other person there and the customer and the shopper and right. the salesperson. Because, oh, we all have stuff in common. We know what it's like to be tall. Like, if you want to make friends with a League of Legends player, you should probably drop some League of Legends names and champions and, and make it clear that you're a, a player as well. You have a shirt, a victory shirt or something, right? I mean, these are the steps. Get on their radar. Bond over commonalities. Then you have to move the conversation forward. You have to take it deeper. You can't just let, let it be like, oh, that's the tall salesperson and I'm a tall shopper. Great. We're friends now. It, <laughs> Yeah. You have to deepen the relationship and move yes. it forward. And so you can't just keep the same level of vulnerability. You're going to have to reveal something. Like if you tell them, like, I always dreamed of being short and they say I did too. And now you guys have revealed a secret to one another. And it's like, but that took guts and that took courage yeah. and that took vulnerability. Yes. And if you do say it, maybe they'll be like, oh, how dare you? You should be proud to be tall. And it's like you have to risk rejection. Yeah. And so this is a moment where a lot of people struggle. Like, okay, fine. I got on their radar. I made the small talk. I bonded over commonalities, but I don't want to get rejected. And it's like, they'll, ne they'll never take the relationship deeper or even try. So, well, this is where I see people making mistakes a lot online. So it's fairly common knowledge that to grow your accounts and to grow your business that you have to do this. You have to go out and make friends. And I see people constantly wanting to avoid the vulnerability. They don't want to talk about themselves. They want to repeat whatever the uh, the poster said, or maybe they want to do it in their own words. Hell yeah. Yeah. Or like emojis Emoji. or, or thumbs up and no one's paying attention to that. Well, it won't take the relationship deeper. No. So it w might put you on their radar. Maybe. Maybe. It's as far as it's going to go. If that. They'll recognize you as somebody, as a regular commenter. And that's as far as it goes. They're not going to put you in the friend category or acquaintance category or someone that I'd like, know, and trust category. If you're just repeating things or you're agreeing with them, nobody wants to hear that. We want connection. Yeah. And same in real life. If you go to a cafe and you're, you're there for your first time, you're just another customer and no one really cares or pays attention. Right. But if you are a regular and you keep showing up, Bam, you start to make friends and you're definitely on their radar and they know your order and they know what you like. And it's like, yeah. I think I'm building a friendship here. If you start joking with them more mm -hmm. or talking about your day and they talk about theirs, soon you're friends. Yeah. But you have yeah. to risk rejection. Like our local Starbucks, they know we go in there every Sunday. They know our order uh, and they're all super nice to us, but they didn't do that the first time or the first 10 times we went in there. They, we had to build that up over time and be friendly. and Yeah, and now they think it's cute and adorable that we order a giant light and <laughs> fog to share yeah. like, a, like a malted milkshake from the 60s or something. <laughs> yeah, but that's like our connection thing. That's our relationship thing. We just like to share and we feel closer when we do that. Sure, and... but even that is being vulnerable. If you're going to make a weird order, yeah. you might stand out, but they might be annoyed by your order they might be like oh it's such a hassle like it could be anything yeah. right took the risk made the order you didn't worry about how it looked and yeah. bonded over it fair play yeah all right well that's really great i mean it's really really helpful 
Uh, thank you so much. And I know that 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 part right there, that fire part of how to make friends, is it's going to be really helpful for a lot of people. So yeah, and that wasn't even the full process, but I know, I know. We could do a whole podcast episode on just how to make friends, how to talk to people, how to do like that. We weren't even getting into that today, but because it was more, it's more about connecting with people. So thank you. You're the best. You're the best. Well, since I'm friends with all of the Rise Rebels out there that are watching and listening, I'm going to give you my book, our book, <laughs> Eyes Wide Open, Volume 1. It's the world's first self-help coffee table book. And since we're friends, and I'm going to do what real friends do, I'm going to give you a copy of the PDF. Go to eyeswideopenfree.com and download your free copy. And when you do that, you're going to join our newsletter. We put it out three times a week and I talk about all the silly things that are going on in my life. I share like an insane, crazy person, but we keep getting more people like constantly because they're really into it and we put a lot of love into it and I'm really silly and honest and it's a great way to get to know us better. So would you say it helps people make friends with you? It does. It helps people make friends with me. <laughs> And because I like being your friend, I'm going to end the ad now. So it's really funny that I do this podcast and pour my heart out in the newsletter and share everything that I do with people because I used to identify as an introvert and I was super terrified of rejection and so scared to talk to people because of my mental issues with being an introvert being an introvert in quotes, right? So Jay, how can people who identify like this, who have mental health issues, how can they make this go faster so they can avoid rejection? All right. Let's imagine you're feeding a strange dog. Okay. Okay. Who controls whether that dog accepts your food or rejects it? That's a good question. Thank you. Um, I'm going to say the dog. So that's what most people think. Right. And when you think this, you are now disempowered. You are now out of control. You have zero control. Okay. If you think you're at the mercy of the dog. Right. But Cesar Milan, the dog whisperer, do you think he would agree with this? You are at the mercy of whether the dog accepts or rejects your food. Oh, no. He would say you are in control. You're the, the owner. Yeah. yeah. And he would know that you could influence this dog to eat the food. Right. You have massive influence on whether or not the dog eats the food. He wouldn't have someone come up to him and say, oh, my dog won't take my food. What do I do? He wouldn't send them away with, oh, well, you're at the mercy of the dog. Sorry, buddy. He'd be like, there's like, we can do this and this and this and this and this. Yeah. Right? Yes. He would have solutions. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But dude's just a man and, and he can teach other people to be dog whisperers. He can train his kids to be good with dogs and so on. And so there's things you can do. If there's someone like him around who's like pointing out that we can all do so many different things to get this dog to eat the food, then everyone who's just whining like, oh, I guess I'm at the mercy of the dog feels weird. No, like, mm, yeah, fair play. Okay. So maybe ultimately the dog has the final say, but you have like 80% influence over this or something mm -hmm. like you can make a food offer that's almost irresistible. True. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. You, yeah. You can you can offer it like slop some food on a plate and be like here, or you can put like a nice little dog treat here and then a little one further down and another one closer to you and another one closer to you until he gets really close to you and then he's eating like a treat out of the palm of your hand. <laughs> it's like the dog didn't change. Yeah. How you connected with the dog changed. True. Who had control? The dog. I mean, kind of. He could have said no at any time, kind of, yeah. but it didn't really, did it? Like you had all the control. Hmm. So when someone says they want to make more friends and avoid rejection, what am I automatically thinking? That they don't understand that they're in control. Right. But they are in control. Yeah. Because I, I didn't think that I would assume, I mean, it's the dog that's taking it or not. Looks that way. Yeah. But you bring any dog to Cesar Milan and he will have different food strategies and, and he's going to get the dog to eat like 99 times out of a hundred. Okay. So he is not at the mercy of any dog. Right. right fair play. Because he just knows if I apply myself well and connect well and offer well, it's going to be impossible to say no. I have more control. Mm -hmm. who, who has more control, the offerer 
or the acceptor. It feels like the acceptor. It feels like the acceptor yes. has more control. Yes. But the acceptor only has minor control. They can say yes or no. That's their power. The offer can offer treats, can do it from far away, can do it from close, can change this, can change that, can get a friend, can take it slow, can take it fast, can force feed them. Like the offerer has insane amounts of power and leverage and solutions and options available to them. The acceptor has very little power. Yes or no. That's it. That's all they have. Right. And you can just keep offering different things until they say yes. Like eventually they say yes. Fair enough. Okay. You find the right offer and people say yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But how does that deal with the, the mental health and the introversion? Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting there. Oh. But we got to set some groundwork. Okay. My bad. Because a fear of rejection is only had by someone who doesn't understand they control acceptance and rejection. If you know that you control this, mm -hmm. you don't have that fear. Right. Cesar Milan knows he can feed any dog. He knows he controls this. And the dog has like very little power. He, the dog can say yes or no as many times as it wants. But eventually it's going to be starving or hungry. Like humans want companionship. They want to connect. It's a natural thing. Yes. No one runs around and is like, I'm the hardest person to sell. I reject everything. I am a rejector. I mean, there's someone who says that, but it's always a lie. They have plenty of products in their life. Yeah, yeah. They've already bought tons of times from tons of people. Right. You just need to find the right offer. And the people who are getting dollars from those people or making friends with those people are the ones who bother to find the right offer. The offers have all the power. And so once you realize the offer has all the power or most of the power, you realize that there's nothing to fear. Why would I fear something I control? That's true. Why do I fear a dog not eating from my hand if I know I can control it and in a week I'm going to have him eating out of my hand? Like maybe a month if it's tricky. Right. Who cares? I, I'm in control. I have power. This introverted, I'm afraid of rejection, I can't make friends, it's too hard, yada, 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 is just denying the natural human connection and, and the natural power we all have as offers, as initiators, as action takers, as friend makers. Right. So the mental health starts there. Do you really want to be a powerless victim who's at the mercy of whether a human or a dog says yes or no? Or do you want to take matters into your own hands, exert your power, apply yourself, take control, and make offers that work? Like, you want to get the hang of it. Yeah, 100%. Well, so that's the thing. Yeah. If you keep losing at bowling, do you want to just whine that you're bad at bowling? Or do you want to take lessons? Do you want to get a coach? Do you want to invest some time? Do you want to practice? Do you want to get a book? Do you want to stay up late and practice while other people are sleeping? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you want to be at the mercy of your problems all the time? Or do you want to take control? Well, any it's very important for anyone who's working on their mental health to answer this first. Right. I was going to say, anybody who's here... And watching this is wants to be in control of their mental health. That's why they're watching. That's why they tune in to our show is for this, right? And so I know that anybody out there that wants to work on this can. And this is a skill, like I said at the beginning, that this is all skill-based and easily learnable by anyone. And like I said earlier, if an, if an introvert in quotes like me can do this, anyone can. Uh, I think... Then it has to do a lot with how we talk to ourselves and how we what we tell ourselves. You kind of you mentioned it. Like somebody out there says that that they're crap at this and whatever you said, but but it's true. Like the the people who are saying, like, I'm an introvert, it's hard for me to make friends. It's hard for me to talk. I used to, to say it. Yeah. Until I convince you not to. Yeah. But you taught me that I have all the power. And so when we were doing Rice Kink, so this is a long time ago, I you told me about an event here in Toronto where people go in their underwear in the winter time and they ride the train and they they go to a, some bar like and they hang out at the bar and then they dance and they have like all this all night long event, right? And I was going to uh, to make connections and to meet people because if people are willing to walk out in public in their underwear surely that would be a down to wear a kink shirt right and we were making them at the time so i remember going there i was all alone new to toronto i barely knew anybody i was so scared and i'm on the train with all these people in their underwear who are super vulnerable because they're in their underwear in a regular train for people who are fully dressed and i'm the one who was afraid 
now I look back at it and I'm like, I was such an idiot. Like those people were waiting for me. They were desperate to know about my kink business. And here I was acting all quiet and shy and wishing you were with me. And like, oh my God, I don't know what to say. And I don't know what to do. And it, it was so scary for me. But now knowing that like all I had to do was be a little bit vulnerable and ask questions and ask questions and, and like put myself out there and empower myself to move outside of the introvert space in my head because it wasn't it wasn't helpful and I ended up walking away from that event I spent half the day there I spent a bunch of money and I get, gave out like 10 cards at the max because I was so terrified I could have walked away with way more than that and now I look back and I'm like, this was this was not helping me. And it was just hurting me by holding on to the to they are in control of this and I'm not. And the whole time that's what I was thinking. Like they're in control of this and they're not paying attention to me. And so that was my bad. Yeah, all good. Um once you realize you have control of this, then you get to decide how much rejection you get. Yeah. So you decide how direct your approach is or how subtle your approach is when you're connecting with someone else. Right. And so in business and marketing, you may have heard the terms direct response versus brand building or inbound marketing or <laughs> content marketing or something. Right? Basically, direct response is like going up to a kennel full of dogs and just Sticking out your treat with no effort in front of the next kid and the next <laughs> kid until one of them says yes. Right. But this method requires a lot of numbers. You have to do a lot of dogs. Yes. Until you find one who accepts. So it also means a lot of rejection. 100 for one. Yeah. yeah. So direct response generally has a lot of rejection. Right. Door to door sales. A lot of rejection. Right. Cold calling. Yes. A lot of rejection. Tele telemarketing. Yes. A lot of rejection. Spamming, email spamming, a lot of rejection. Yes. These are all direct response methods. Right. But you can also go the opposite way and be super subtle. And so I recently demonstrated this to you. And I showed you that you can make small talk for weeks at a time. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can get on someone's radar for two weeks, just commenting and liking and commenting and liking and replying to someone's stories or something for two weeks. Yeah. Then you can spend another two weeks giving touch points here and asking questions there and writing some DMs there, maybe taking the relationship a little further. And then you can make another two weeks mm -hmm. offering them something small that they're interested in that has nothing really to do with your business or, or just like it's the smallest offer you can make from your business. Would you proofread this for me? I'm not even selling anything. And if they say yes to that gentle offer, you've developed goodwill and they'll feel invested in you and your product and your brand and they'll know you and they'll see your offering. And so then maybe you can get it to a deeper offer. Like I'm launching a new product and this time I'd like you to be part of it. Or could you shout it to your audience or whatever? And now you can ask a deeper ask. But if you take it this subtly, mm -hmm. if it's been months before you offered or asked anything, like how are you going to get rejected? Where, who, who does this and ends up with rejection? You don't. It's like you impossible. Absolutely don't. Yeah, it's like I just made friends. I just made friends with my hairdresser or my nail tech or whatever. I just made friends with my League of Legends friend, and we just played lots of games together. Or we just had a lot of salon appointments together, and that's it. And I just shot the shit and made small talk. Eventually, they asked, "What do you do?" And a month later, like I asked them to proofread my stuff. It's like this is so gentle. How would you ever get a rejection in this scenario? If when I had gone to that event that I just told you about, if I had just sat with a group of people, like I wanted to meet everybody. And so I, I had a really hard time with that. But if I had sat down with the one group of people and just hung out with them at the end of the night, they would have been super excited to follow me, learn about rice kink, learn about what we were doing. And it was my bad for, for this, for yeah. not doing it. But you didn't direct response to them. Like in your, in your scenario, in your proposed scenario, mm -hmm. You would have to make small talk and bond yeah. over commonalities and talk yes. about 
the kink scene and the underwear event and yes. your your history and their history and yeah. what brought you guys here to Toronto. Like at a right. party, you yeah. just meet people. Yeah. You have to meet people and connect with them. And if you do it that way, what have you done to the chance of rejection? You have pretty much el- eliminated yeah, practically it. eliminated it. Yeah. Technically, you might experience one rejection sometime, but it's almost impossible. Yeah. But it's way slower. And so the direct response people, they'll like, say I want to sell a product and then the next day they're selling it and they're offering it to the kennel and all the different candidates and some of them say yes and they've got sales and it's yeah. like fast yes but there's a lot of rejection and you need thick skin and people will hate you for it and they'll call you a spammer and it's terrible for your mental health and it's a lot of anxiety your mental health needs to be tip top for that though. right well only certain people are good for door to door sales yes. or telemarketing yes. if you're not you're going to have to find a subtler approach and you can go so subtle that you've almost reduced all form of rejection. Yeah, it's true. Right. Uh, and I but that also, takes super long. I want to point out too that not only does it take super long for you to get to the point of where you can make an offer and they probably won't reject you, but it's also going to mean that, it, that your money is going to take longer. Yeah, your sales off. cycle is way longer. Yeah. Yeah, you got to wine and dine and schmooze people forever and then they become a sale like months later. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if that's how you want to run your business, that's fine. Or you can direct response it, but then you need thick skin. There are pros and cons to everything, but the point is you can control this, right? Yes. You control how much rejection there is and and whether the, the candidate says yes or no and like how long it takes them to say yes or no. It sounds like they have all the control, but really you have like the lion's share. All they have, all they have is the final say every time you make an offer and then you make a better offer and then they're like, well, okay, maybe. And then you make an even better offer. And they're like, all right, I'm in. Like, they don't have a lot of power. I recently met an influencer and we became friends in like a day. Right. <laughs> and like by friends, I mean, we were in, in the DMs having a conversation, right? And it's been like three weeks now. And he asked me today for help. Sure. But that was a three week. Three week sales cycle, and it's not even a sale. Right? No, it's not. But my point is, is that, like, because I did it the slow, subtle way, subtle way, that I didn't even have to really do yeah, much. Yeah. If you do it super subtle, you don't even have to make an offer. You just incept the offer, and it gets invited. People right. asking for stuff. Right. And so by asking me for help, and then giving epic, amazing answers. <laughs> Um, this person is going, it's going to be a no brainer. It's a gimme. When I finally do make any kind of monetary ask, ask, he'll be throwing money at me. Yep. Uh, and let me be clear. It's not because I'm a girl or I have big boobs in any way, shape or form. None of that has ever been discussed in our private, uh, conversation. No, no, no. That person is like a wise, savvy. Yes mission focused entrepreneur like they're not screwing around but the point is what you just described is like the inbound marketing dream Mm -hmm. it's the content marketing dream it's the i didn't offer i didn't sell i didn't direct response i just put out my stuff and i was just a nice person and they came to me and asked and that's what people want yeah and so it's fine you can do that yes you can be that subtle right you can but it comes with a super long sales cycle it does it does and just to be honest the only reason i i brought that part of it up is because a lot of people want to look at me and assume things about me and my conversations and how i make money and how i get clients but this is untrue Uh she slipped her way to the top (laughs) it's completely untrue and so today someone on twitter asked what makes you different and unique well what makes me different and unique is that i'm sweet and kind and i spread love like this is how i behave most of the time, this is what I... Well, I would have said men- mental health without therapy, but... Uh, well, yeah, no, they meant, like, personality-wise, like, what makes me different as a person when I stand out, not my business. And so, yes, mental health without therapy, this is how we stand out as a business. But as a person, like, in the business world, most people are not sweet and kind. They are ruthless. The, like, all of the answers were... Because I'm a D word and I don't give up. I'm tenacious. I'm a hardcore. Like, and so my little answer of I'm sweet and kind and I 
<laughs> and bring love and light. Like there's people who are desperate for sweet and kind and love and light. They talk to people all day long who are ruthless and hard and never give up and hustle, hustle. And then here I come along. Hee hee. Hi. How are you? And they love it. They love it because I'm different. And because I'm sweet and kind and they need this because I was sweet and kind to this influencer in a couple touch points. And because he's not used to everyone else around him being like that, it, he was more open to what I had to say. And so we just had a conversation and he asked for help. So it, and thank God that I was I'm super happy that I have a great teammate who was able to help me move this along faster because if I was answering it alone I still could have done it it just would have taken a little longer so I'm super grateful thank you so much you are amazing and wonderful and I really highly encourage you Rise Rebels if you have a specific question about your situation and you really we didn't really cover your specific thing don't hesitate to leave it in the comments ask a question or my email is always open. You can ask and we will be happy to answer you directly. Or maybe we'll make a video just for you. Okay, Jay. So we covered how friends are money. But how are friends better than sales? Okay, well, aren't there plenty of people who have gotten a lot of money, but no matter how much they get, they're unable to restore or rejuvenate their health and they still have mental health problems. Didn't Matthew Perry recently pass because he had mental health issues despite having loads of money? Yeah, he was super rich and super sad. He couldn't heal his mental health. That's yeah. true. And yeah. Steve Jobs had tons of money, but he couldn't heal his physical health. Right. Yeah. Okay. So how are friends better than sales? How are they better than money? Friends aren't just as good as money because it's friends who pay us, but friends do what to our mental health? Well, if they're your friend for real, they improve your mental health. I'm saying, <laughs> if you have hundreds of thriving friends who you can turn to for support, how is your mental health? Did Matthew Perry have a lot of friends at the end there? No, he had two basically and was super all alone and was- How do you know that? Uh, I read his book. I, I read his book and, and he was really all alone and, and still suffered at the end with his mental health. Right. So. When people feel alone and they have no one to turn to, is it likely to boost their mental health or are they going to feel even worse and their their mindset's going to degrade and devolve? No, they, they feel worse and their mindset's going to degrade. When do you feel better? When you have a lot of family and friends around and support system you can turn to or when you're alone? When I'm having issues with mental health and I'm struggling, it's more helpful when I have people around me who are understanding and loving and caring towards. Yeah. When you have a support system. Yes. Do you want a life where you have no support system? No. Do you want a life where something bad happens, you have no one to turn to? No. Does anyone want that? No. So I'm saying making friends sets up your business for success. Like you have people who will actually buy from you, not enemies. Right. And it also gives you a support system. Yes. Yeah. So sales alone doesn't give you friends. No. Doesn't give you a support system. You no. just have money. Right. There are lots of people who have money and who are depressed and alone and have no one. Right. But friends brings you money. Yeah. And support. Yeah. Which is better. Yeah. The money alone yeah. or money plus support. Money plus the support. Right. Yeah. yeah. So so that seems like friends are better than money. You're right. Friends are better than sales. You're right. You're right. And that's why Nike to this day would rather make a politician friend today than sell 10,000 more shoes. Yeah. True. That makes sense. Uh, so as somebody who in the past has had a lot of mental health, mental health issues and no friends, I never ever thought of this, to be honest with you. Even but, when I, sorry. But you did. Recently, we did an episode and you were like, I had one friend in Toronto and I lost her and it felt terrible. And I was like, because it was your one friend and you yeah. freaking needed it. Like, yeah. Well, what I was going to say was when I was struggling a lot a long time ago with the mental health stuff, and I thought being alone was the answer, but really being alone was my way of not putting my mental health issues on someone else. Well, and it was your way of cutting out toxic friends. Yeah. That's but that's a different story. That's different. Yeah. I'm talking about a real support system yes. and real friends. Yes. If you bring toxic friends into it, then yeah, of course be alone. Like I'd no. rather be alone than be around toxic people. Right. Yeah. But that's not even part of the conversation. Like 
those shouldn't even. No, no, I, I'm not saying them. I'm saying like my real friends who w wanted to help me, I would purposefully push them away. Oh, well, that's good. Because I thought that I was helping them by not bring, being the Debbie Downer and bringing everything down. But the funny part is, is that I didn't even think about it until just now. The times that I did allow them in my life, I felt better afterwards. And then I'd be, I would tell myself, yeah, but I'm just going to feel shitty again after they leave. Or I'm just going to feel shitty, you know, when, uh, like they go back to their regular stuff and I go back to my regular day of wanting to die. And like, I guess, but you're still a day ahead. At least you had one day of not wanting yeah. to die. Like, but it's I, better. Well, it's I wasn't grateful for it and I didn't appreciate it the way I would now. Yeah. And looking back on my poor friends who were trying to like get in and help me, and I was just kept pushing them away because I thought it, I was doing them a favor. Yeah. But I can see now how they were actually helping and improving. Yeah. And you know what happens to a lot of rich people when they get money? Uh, yeah. They lose their friends. Yeah. And what do they suddenly value more than anything on earth? Friendship. Yeah. Real. Yeah. Real, authentic friendship. Yeah. Precious. More than gold. Friends are better than sales. <laughs> okay. You made your point and I 100% agree with you. Like, And Nike and Kim K and Starbucks all knew it. And we're not saying that like friends are better than money. We're saying... They bring money they plus they a support bring system. money plus a support They system. bring two things. Yeah. The sale brings one thing. And often loses in friends. Yeah. Yeah, right, making true. a ton of money, it's okay, it's good, I guess, whatever. Yes. But friends brings you two things: it brings you the money from your friend network and all the new customers you have available, and they're friends of friends, and yada yada yada. Mm -hmm. And it gives you a support system. True. All right, fair play. Well, if you're looking for new friends, Rise Rebels, Jay and I are always taking applications, but you better be ready and willing to apply the things that you learn on this channel. Because we are not taking friends who are not about rising themselves. Because we want people to uplift us and we want to uplift you. Together we rise. So thank you so much. This is a great episode. I feel amazing. And I really want to know, you guys, if you guys have any questions. If you really want to know about your own specific stuff. you want to get some more nuanced answers about your own thing. And I want you to understand. I we. I really want you to start looking at your clients and customers as possible friends. Stop calling them clients. Stop calling them customers and call them your friends. People buy from those they love and trust and know. And your your friends out there that are waiting to purchase your stuff, they can't wait for you to reach out to them and make friends with them. So thank you so much for helping me hone my superpower for helping me be better at this, for helping me be more confident in finding friends and making friends so that I can really blossom the way I have been recently. And it feels really good to be using my superpower. So thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Yay. I just have uh, one final question. Do you have any final thoughts that you would like to share with our wonderful and amazing audience? Well, I think you nailed it, right? Together we rise. Yeah. Yay. Well, that's why our book and this podcast are called Eyes Wide Open. After today, you'll know how to navigate friendship and sales better. And you can go to this video here called How to Network Like a Superstar, Shattering Introverts Excuses to help you connect with people easier and to help you keep your eyes wide open. Keep rising. <laughs>